You can iterate in a non-destructive way and create multiple versions of a scene in Unreal Engine using the sequencer. Check this out. I want to give a big shout out to Ruby for this spectacular fan art. Keep drawing and making people happy. Today I'm covering sequencer, which is ideal for rendering out video and image sequences. If you're familiar with the take system in Cinema 4D, in Unreal you can use sequencer to iterate on lighting, composition, cameras, materials, aspect ratios, and you can build it in a completely customizable way based on your needs for the current project. Before we begin, you must know there's another tool inside of Unreal called Level Snapshot that gives you different options, more specifically used in virtual production, for making changes to different camera setups. I'd recommend what I'll show you in Sequencer for rendered out video and animation sequences. So I've got this layout here uh, in Miro. It's a great digital uh, whiteboard app. So the first row is the outliner, and it's kind of your main setup in Unreal. And then you iterate on that in sequences. I'm labeling them here sequence masters. And the things that I iterate on are lighting, materials, and objects. I'll cover those later in the thing. But uh, you see, I, I broke um, that down into two different sequence masters. And then from there, I'm going to frame things up differently. So I'm going to take this sequence and drop it into another sequence, creating a subsequence. And I'll set up my cameras and adjust things for those compositions. This will make more sense later, but I wanted to give this diagram to kind of see how things are flowing. I'll come back to this as we go. So here in Unreal, I've basically prepped my scene and it's all set up to iterate on. So before I build some sequences, I just wanted to point out I've built some cameras uh, at the different aspect ratios that I'll utilize later for rendering and setting up those subsequences. So the classic 16 by 9, I'm using the, the DSLR preset. That's 36 by 20.25, which is a 1.7777, uh, etc. cetera, uh, aspect ratio. And then I have a 9 by 16, which uh, if you do the math, it's a 0.5625. And here you can see it's a 20.25 by 36 millimeter. And then a one by one, just 36 by 36. So the next thing I'll do, I'll set up my first sequence. And I've created a folder. We'll call this um, sequence master underscore one. So this is just the first one. And I'm actually just going to leave this blank uh, just as like my main. I'll just go in here and I'm going to duplicate this sequence, control D. And so now I have sequence master number two. And if I double click that, I open that and you can see right here it says sequence or SM underscore two. So you can see it creates a sequence um, over here in the outliner. To make changes to anything, you have to drop it into your sequencer. Otherwise, if you don't, you're adjusting it globally across the whole project. And so for, for the first time, I'm just going to adjust these lights. I'll drag these lights in here and then we'll do the right outside light as well. And so you must enable settings inside of Sequencer. You don't necessarily have to set up keyframes. The goal is to make iterations inside of Sequencer, not change things globally. I'm going to tweak the exposure on these 2,000, 3,000, and then we'll do 3,000 on this one as well. Cool, we've got some adjustments. So you can already see Sequence 1, that's the original Sequence Master 2, there's some changes. Great. Now I want to move this outside light uh, and slide it in a little bit. I need to actually add a transform and then now I can move it and it doesn't affect the main. See the light is still over there and in this one the light has moved. I'm also going to tweak the color. We'll make it green, a little more noticeable. Great. So that's the basics. And technically I could just add a camera to this, drop it in here. It automatically adds a camera cut track. Um, and here's my camera. It has a transform so I can select on this and I could like back up, move over here and pan it over. And now these are specific changes that are only in this sequence. If I go to the other one, here's the main. Here's the changes I made to this camera. But that's not where the real power comes in. If I delete this camera and I nest this sequence as a subsequence into another sequence and then add that camera, I can start to build on this. Let me show you. I'm going to create another sequence. We're going to call this subsequence underscore one. And then I'm going to 
say this is for my one by one camera. Okay, I'm just gonna pop this on top. And then now I'm gonna take this sequence, um, take sequence one, sequence master one, and put it inside of this subsequence. And then here, I'm going to add my one by one camera. Drag this up so we can see. The cool thing is I can duplicate this. I can duplicate this. And we'll call this one subsequence 1 16 by 9. Okay. And then I'm going to open that one up, remove the 1 by 1 camera, and put in the 16 by 9. Cool. And then I'm going to duplicate this again, and we'll call this one the 9 by 16. And then same thing here. Drop in the 9 by 16 in here. Just a quick note on sequences. If you want to adjust the camera, this, if you hover over here, this shows the camera cut track and it shows that the camera is um, technically locked. You, you can go in here and you, you, I'm trying to move my camera and I can't. But if I want to adjust the camera, I click on this icon and then now I, now I can move. So if I am trying to compose a shot where this thing is kind of in frame, great, it feels composed nicely. Um, that's good. And then if I go to the 9 by 16, there we go. Uh, it just seems like there's a lot of extra space. So again, I can, I can uh, click on the camera here, zoom in. Uh, kind of cool, I guess. But now I'm losing a lot of my doodads that were in the outside of the camera. So that's where like this comes in handy because I can I can uh, adjust those uh, those doodads that are floating around here for this specific sequence subsequence. Let me pop out of my camera, zoom out a little bit, and then I'm going to drop those doodads into this sequence. Because again, if I don't put them into this sequencer, then I will make changes and they will be adjusted globally, and I don't want that. So let's find that one, drop him in, find this one, drop it in, and this one, drop it in. That's good for me. So now that I have transforms in here, all I have to do is like reposition. Let's scoot it uh, like there. Scoot this one over here, put it like right in front. Scoot this one down. Yeah, it's bumping it, whatever. This one over here, this one, it's not in there. Because I didn't see it pop up when I clicked it. Like these, these select, they're in here. This one is not, so I need to still put it in. And now it's in here, it has a transform. Drop it down right there. And again, the way to do that is drop under here and hit transform if it's not, if you're not seeing it. Okay, pop back into my camera. Okay, interesting. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But now I can see my doodads. I'm going to create an alternate version and tweak tweak the material on this arcade. So sequence master 1B. Drop in the arcade. And just the way I have this set up, I'm going to open this up and click on the right side. And then I'm going to tweak the right side using the material element switcher. I'm going to pop open the content browser, go to my materials. There you go, a whole other version with an alternate material. And this is how you switch out materials on your object. Another option is create an alternate version swapping out the objects. So I'm going to duplicate this sequence master one and we'll call it C. Oh, forgive me, now my naming, my naming convention is starting to fall apart. And one way is dropping in this new object. Uh, if I do it this way, I'd have to make it hidden in the game because it would technically be visible in the outliner, which is the master, so it would fall down to every layer below it. For example, sequence master 2, it's in there. Sequence master 1B, yep. Need to make it hidden in the game. Boom. Okay, so that technically will hide it from all of these other sequences. Yep, you can confirm that. It's in this, all hidden. All right, so here we are, and we would want to reveal it in this sequence. So drop it in, go add actor hidden in game, 
and then turn it on. And so now in this sequence only, it's enabled and it's here. And I can scale it up. And then this arcade, I'd want it to go away. So I would drop it inside of the sequence and I would add a hidden in game to this, turn it off. And technically the screen as well, hidden in, oh, 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 where's my screen? Let's put it up here. Actor hidden in game, boom. Okay, so there's that way to do it. Uh, another way, which is actually easier, is a spawnable actor. So I'm gonna delete these, start back from scratch, delete it from my outliner, see it's still there. And then if I go to the object and I drop it directly into the sequencer, you see this little icon, this little lightning bolt icon and it says right here this item is spawned by sequencer according to this object's spawn track and you can see over here in the outliner it has a little icon as well so it's only in that sequence and just to confirm that go back to other sequences tutorial sequence folder um, not in there not in any of these sub sequences it's only in the sequence that we created and same sort of thing, I would drop in this arcade, actor hidden in game, do the same thing to the screen, you get the idea. And there's one last thing. The easy way to utilize all of these sequences to render out everything quickly inside of your movie render queue. So inside a sequencer, click here to go to movie render queue, uh, and be sure it's enabled in your plugins. I'm not gonna actually render this one. You can click right here and add all of your levels. So we're gonna do the 16 by nine version, we're gonna do the one by one version and we'll do the nine by 16 version. Uh, here you can go in and adjust your settings. We'll just do standard HD, tweak all these as you feel. But this one, I'm just gonna save as a preset. I've already kind of done that, but these are 4K. I'm gonna save these as like a uh, HD preset. So you, uh, I have a folder set up inside of my content folder called render presets. I'm gonna name this HD underscore 16 by nine. And then good to go, accept. Uh, and once you do that, you can just drop this down and switch it to the preset. So whatever, we'll say 4K. And do this one, the nine by 16 preset. So, and then you just boom, hit render, walk away. I hope you found this helpful. As always, would love your thoughts if you've done this or you have another technique that you use. Please let us know if you like this stuff and we'll see you in the next one.